In this tutorial, we'll refresh our memory regarding multi-digit subtraction, focusing on borrowing numbers, how to do it, and why it works. Example, 413 minus 337. We line up our numbers like this. Of course, we could add decimals to the end of each number and align them up, and everything else falls into place. Again, from right to left. We start with the ones column first. 3 minus 7. Hmm. 3 is less than 7. So we're kind of stuck here. Now, this is a temporary problem. True that 3 is less than 7, but there are a lot more numbers up here. So saying that we're stuck isn't really true. We just need to borrow some numbers from these other digits. How does this make sense? And it's a great question. Some students just learn how to borrow as a little trick they learn and don't really understand why it works. And this gets them by, as long as they don't run into any confusing areas where they get stuck. Other students are capable at this point of trying to understand why borrowing works. And this gives them a lot more power in that they can always go back to the understanding to figure out any problem, no matter how confusing it is. Let me, on the side over here, explain to you why borrowing works. Consider it. You may have to watch this video a couple times to fully understand it, and that's okay. Also, some students will find it a bit tough to fully understand at this point. That's okay, too. It's just a little bit of extra power for those who can figure it out here. You see, we can break down our numbers just like we did back when we did place value. 413 becomes 400 plus 10 plus 3. And 337 becomes 300 plus 30 plus 7. And we are subtracting. It looks a bit messier, but it is the same question. So let's start with the 1s. Again, same problem, 3 is less than 7. But we look over and we have a 10 next door. And it's ready to help. So let's move a 10 over from this box to this box, leaving a 0 behind. And in our 1s column, we have now 10 plus 3 equals 13. And we can subtract 13 minus 7. That's 6. So let's shift over to our traditional layout again. See this 1 up here? That's the 10 we borrowed. So we can just cross out the 1 and show it now being a zero. And move the one over to our ones position and see that it gives us 13. And 13 minus seven is six. So we borrowed from the tens column to supply 10 to our ones column. Now let's move over to our tens column. Now we have zero minus three. Again, a problem. Zero is less than three. We're stuck again. But we notice that there are still more numbers on the top here, so we should be able to borrow and get by. Let's jump to the right here and see what this may look like. We see that we may have a zero in this box, but we have 400 in this box next door. And they're both part of the same number, so borrowing from one box to the next is perfectly fine. If we borrow 100 from here, we're left with 300 in this box, and we get a fresh new 100 in our box, and we're ready to subtract. 100 minus 30 is 70. Going back to our regular method, we borrow from the 4, leaving a 3 up here and making it 10 in the 10 spot. That is, we're going from 100 to tens. It's ten times as big. Every time we borrow from the column next door, we're adding ten, as the columns are always ten times bigger. So, ten minus three equals seven, and we're done with that column. And we move over to the hundreds column, and we only have three left on the top, so three minus three is zero. So our answer is 76. And over here, we see that we would have 
300 minus 300, which is also 0. They're both showing 76. Confirm. So we see that borrowing works. And using the place value method over here, we can better understand why it works. Indeed, it takes a bit of thought, but we can make sense of it. At this point in your math career, being able to do borrowing is the most important thing, as it allows you to solve all kinds of problems involving subtraction. Truly understanding why it works at this point is a bonus for those of you who are capable of that thought process.